Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you a couple of really simple, easy to use and remember ways to loop through cells using VBA in Excel. And we're going to use this little table as an example. And so there are about a million different ways to loop through cells. And the most important thing is to first get a range reference and then figure out how you want to loop through them. Now if you're only dealing with one column of values like this, you might not know that there are a couple different ways to loop through them in VBA. But where you're going to run into trouble is once you finish your code, everything's good to go, and then you expand your range to multiple columns. And all of a sudden, things get a little bit tricky. So let's hit Alt F11 and go to the VBA window, and I'm going to show you just a nice little simple way to do all of this and close these guys. All right, and let's create a little sub loop cells. All right, and we're going to be looping. Let's make a variable to refer to a cell or a range within our loop, my cell as a range. Remember, a cell is a range basically, and let's create a basic loop. So if you want to go through a range of cells, there are many different types of loops we can do. This one's pretty easy. For each my cell, so the variable that you just created that we want to use to refer to a cell or a range within the loop, in, so for each my cell in, in what? In the range that we want to go through. Now, how can we make a range reference? About a million different ways. Let's go with a nice simple one here. First, say what worksheet you want to deal with. Let's deal with the data worksheet, this worksheet, and then the range. And let's just go A22, E4, like that. And we can go down here. Next, my cell, control space to fill it in. And now we have a nice little loop. But what are we actually looping through here? So let's hit control G to open up the immediate window. It's a nice alternative to outputting everything in a message box, and you're going to want to use it if you're going to have a lot of outputs, like we will here, or a lot of quick outputs in succession. And you reference it using debug.print. So now what do we want to output? Well, let's just figure out what we're dealing with. My cell dot address, but I want to remove the dollar signs. I don't like them, so for row absolute, let's make that false. And column absolute, let's make that false. I don't always do that, but for this one, I'm going to. And let's run this macro and see what's going to happen. Hit play or F5. And you'll see that this guy is going through every cell. A2, B2, A3, B3, A4, B4. So it's going like this. Here, 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 and here, here. So when you use one column, You'll think, oh, I'm just going through the cells from top to bottom, it's no problem. And then your range expands and you go, oops, what happened? Because it's now going through six instead of three. What do we do if we just want to go through all of the rows individually? And actually, before I get there, if you want to output the values from this guy, remember, all you have to do, let's copy that and comment that out so it won't run is just my cell dot value. So if we run that, then we get the values from those cells. But let's go back up here. All right. And let's say we want to go through the rows. That was our initial intention. So we go to the end of our range reference and we simply put dot rows. And let's go down here, control A to select it, delete to clear it so it's a little bit easier to see. Hit play, and there we go. We have the individual rows. And this probably doesn't seem like a big deal to you right now, but if you're going to go through a thousand rows, and each one has 10 columns that you want to go through in your range reference, and you're going to be checking my cell dot value for each one of them, <laughs> that's going to take so much time. If you do it like this, you can at least save time because then you can go through the specific column that you want in each row instead of every cell in the row. But how do we do that? Well, let's save this guy up here and just 
make another version down here. And I'm going to hit Control X to remove that. What you do after your range reference, there are a number of ways to do this, of course. Let's go with typing dot cells, open parentheses, and choose the row and the column that you want to reference within that row. You don't have to put anything for row, but I'm going to put one just so it's a little bit easier to read. So stay in the same row. Now, what column do I want to reference here? We're dealing with A2 to B2 and these guys right here. Let's go with column one so I can get red from the first row and close it up. So you just attach this to your cell reference, your range reference, to tell it which value you want to get. And we can go ahead and put address right at the end, but let's not forget the period. And I will clear that guy, click in here, or run it. There we go, A2, A3, A4. You save yourself a bunch of time. And to get the values, just like before, a value, comment that guy out, run it, red, green, blue. Now, what if you have multiple range references in here and your goal is to go through every single cell individually? You may have used union to create that range or you just hard coded multiple range references right in there. All you have to do is to change rows to cells. And then that says, hey, I want to return the individual singular cells from this range reference. And then you go through them just like we did originally using this chunk of code. So sometimes you want to go through the rows individually. Sometimes you want to go through every single cell. So remember that when you're looping through your ranges, make your range reference and don't forget to put dot cells at the end of it to go through all the cells or dot rows to go through the individual rows. There's really so much more that you can do with ranges, but I think that this little tip right here is going to help out a lot of you, especially if you have very long running macros and you're making a loop like this. Of course, if you know anything about arrays, you can save a lot more time if you loop through an array instead of individual cells from the worksheet like this. But that's a really complex topic I'm not going to cover here. And if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my full VBA course on teachexcel.com and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. For this tutorial, that's all there is and I hope you guys have a wonderful week.